What's up, Nen Fight fans? Today, I'm going to tell you exactly why I think Naoya Inoue is the best fighter in the world. The monster, Naoya Inoue! Impressive knockout victory for the monster! Wow. And he's devastating once again from Naoya Inoue. Inoue is now the unified junior featherweight champion of the world. But firstly, let me introduce myself. I'm Dan Morley, a professional boxer in the welterweight division. I've been boxing for 13 years, and for the last few years, I've been making videos about fighters from all eras. And in this series, my aim is to break into detail all of these fighters and what made them so special. Today, I'm gonna to start with the two division undisputed champion, Japanese boxing star, Naya Inoue. And I'm gonna break down for you exactly what makes him the monster. The monster. As a fighter myself, Anue has been one of my favourites to watch for a long time. Not just because his fights are exciting and his knockouts are brutal, but he's so technically sound and a complete package. So what makes Naoya Anue, the Japanese monster, so good? Firstly, there's the obvious. He's blessed with devastating punching power, which is very rare to see in the smaller weight divisions. But it's all well and good having that kind of power, but you need to be able to land it. One way in which he's able to land it is his blinding speed, something you might attribute to the smaller weight divisions. The combination of both Anue's speed and power is one of the main reasons he's such a devastating knockout artist. Oh, oh there he ate another oh. that one with the right hand, sends it through the ropes. But whilst having speed and power is good, you need to know how to land it. And Anue is a master at setting his opponents up. His ring IQ is exceptional. If I use the fight against Stephen Fulton, for example, Anue was jabbing to Fulton's body for the entire fight. A long-term plan that would ultimately create the opening for the right hand that finished the fight. In doing this and changing levels, it was sapping Fulton's energy firstly, but also serving as a distraction. The long-winded nature of this plan subconsciously tricks Fulton into thinking that just the jab's coming to the body, dropping his left hand, creating the opening for the right hand. Because he's not expecting that right hand to come, being programmed to just expect that jab to the body, he doesn't see the shot, and it doubles the effect. And like most fighters, he very rarely throws a knockout shot in his own, usually opting to throw set-up shots in order to divert his opponent's attention and create the openings. Similarly to the Fulton one, because the opponents don't see this coming, the effects are doubled. A good example is his body shots. Anue has such a good range of punches that he sets up so well. Typically, before he throws that signature left hook to the liver, he'll throw a little right hand, either as a straight or an uppercut. The right hand is just a throwaway shot. It's not thrown with any intent or real power, just uses a disguise to generate both the momentum and the opening for the sickening body shot. And this is something I even pulled off in my last fight. Morley. Lovely combination wow. there. And then we'll move on to his timing, which coincided with both the speed and the power is perhaps the most important factor in the knockout. Anue has such excellent timing. For instance, use the right hand he landed against Maloney, perfectly catching Maloney as he himself is throwing his own shot. Or the 1-2 against the boogeyman of the division, Juan Carlos Payano in the first round. A great fighter isn't going to be knocked out with a shot that they can see coming, so the timing of these is so important. In these instances, Anue is walking his opposition down on the front foot, and the timing just allows that punch to hit the sweet spot perfectly. But he's also an excellent counter puncher too. Take his left hook on the back foot against Luis Neri. After dropping Anue in the round prior, an over-eager Neri charges in and gets caught with a left hook. The timing of the punch and Neri's aggressive weight going through the shot maximizes the impact. And this instance here is a perfect example of one of his best tools in my opinion. Something that keeps him safe in defense and allows him to be so effective on the aggressive. And that's his ability to judge distance by the inch. Because he's typically an aggressive fighter, the ability to judge distance whilst pushing his opposition back is key in wearing them out. He's able to stay just out of range and quickly lunge in and out without getting caught himself. This allows him to stay relaxed whilst keeping his opponents under pressure. If he is judging his distance to a T, he also has good defensive head movements in which he can just ride shots off. And once he does close that distance and get into range, he has one of the best range of punches I've ever seen too. Almost every punch in his arsenal has knockout capability. Use the left hook that blasted away Nanito Denaire for an example, or the right hand that demolished Maloney. You have the right uppercut that done the damage against Neri, or all of his brutal body shot knockouts. Mm, three punch combination, oh! goes back to it again! Oh! Big time shot to the body by Inoue! 
And for his opponents, trying to box someone like Inoue, who has both that speed, power, and timing, the ability to just make you miss and walk you down at the same time, and that huge variety of punches is an absolute nightmare because you're constantly under pressure. You know each punch has knockout intent, and you don't know how you're going to get set up by it. Being technically sound and physically gifted will only get you so far. You have to have courage and you have to have the heart of a champion, which again, Inoue has proven. In his brutal fight of the year winner against Nito Donaire, Inoue actually broke his orbital bone. Whilst dealing with the pain of a broken orbital bone and having trouble with his vision, Inoue used his elite level ring IQ and actually did something that he'd seen Donaire do in previous fights. He moved his guard from here over to here, covering the eye up so he could use his good eye to see Donaire. Through multiple parts of that brutal fight, Inoue had to show tremendous heart and a strong chin to get through, to ultimately nearly securing a finish late on with one of his trademark body shots. Listen to the home crowd now, really get behind him. That's a lovely left to the body, lovely shot. Another instance we've seen in his quick powers of recovery was that against Luis Neri, when after being dropped for the first time in his career, he came back and scored his own knockdown in the next round, going on to dominate the fight. So what are his vulnerabilities? Well, to be honest, so far he's looked like quite a complete fighter. From the Neary fight, we could potentially say that he does admire his work at times and doesn't always stay switched on, getting knocked down after throwing a big shot himself, but ultimately he switched on after that and came back to dominate the fight. You could also pick examples in the Tapolis fight where he isn't as subtle as he used to be with his power, instead just opting to bludgeon his opposition, but this is still effective and working. Ultimately, at his weight division, I think he's as close to unbeatable as you can get. But what if he continues to move up weight divisions? Well, every fighter has their ceiling when it comes to weight divisions. Inoue started at 108 pounds and he's already dominated four weight divisions with ease over a five weight class span. Moving up to 126 pounds may be too much for him. Can he continue to move up to 126 pounds and beyond and continue to dominate? The punch power and punch resistance may not be as overwhelming as opponents get a lot bigger. So far, however, Inoue has dominated with such ease that there's no science to suggest this. And it might even work out that the biggest fights available move up to him in Japanese star Junto Nakatani and Bam Rodriguez, two top 10 pound for pound stars that would ultimately make mouthwatering affairs. But that's all for the Monster Nayo Inoue. Comment below and let me know who you want to see a breakdown on next.